In the last class, we completed the 19th chapter, which is the Advaita Jnanam or Karana Ishvara Jnanam. Bhikshu teaching was given by Lord Krishna to develop Titiksha self-knowledge alone is the ultimate solution. Titiksha means tolerance, acceptance of pair of opposites coming into one's life as an experience, the person can withstand when he or she is aware of his or her own nature. Through the Bhikshu Gitam, Lord Krishna taught to all of us. Now, in this chapter, the 20th chapter, which we are going to enter today, Lord Krishna is going to talk about uh, what are the sadhanas to be practiced by a person to attain that self-knowledge. Advaita Jnanam. In spite of the matter-body-mind complex, how I can be away from this emotional upsurges? Emotions will cause lot of damage to the physical body. All negative emotions, fear of future, fear of death, fear of old age, they cause or they influence the future life of an individual. Moksha is nothing but self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is nothing but knowing one's own higher nature. Knowing one's own higher nature is nothing but understanding I, the Atma, the Consciousness Principle as the body, mind free, old age free, disease free and death free. This knowledge serves like an shock absorber. It serves like an armor that is the jnana phalam. If a person is qualified having the preparation and study the Shastra, person attain the benefit of that knowledge. Person is having qualifications, sadhana chatushtaya sampatti, and study the Shastra, definitely that person will get the benefit of that knowledge and he or she can assimilate the teaching. Otherwise, the teaching of the teacher, whatever I listen, it will remain as an information. It cannot bring a transformation in my life. 
therefore to bring transformation in one's own life one has to assimilate the teaching to assimilate the teaching one has to be qualified enough to grasp the teaching guru does not know that whether student is completely qualified or not whether student got the benefit of knowledge or not the teacher cannot decide teacher cannot know i am alone the person who can know really i am getting the benefit of knowledge really i am benefited by this atma gnana or not who is the who is the evident principle here i am evident to myself am i benefited by this knowledge or not if not what i have to do lord krishna is going to talk about that qualifications or sadhanas to be acquired this chapter is very close to 14th chapter of bhagavad gita gunatraya vibhaga yoga so lord krishna is going to explain how these gunas influence the person in the previous chapter we come to know i am the mixture of matter and spirit matter is known as maya maya has got three gunas since i am a mixture of purusha and prakriti prakriti gunas sattva rajas and tamas are bound to be there in my personality no one can avoid these gunas will influence my personality how should i make them spiritually friendly gunas are bound to be there you cannot avoid as long as body mind complex is there you cannot avoid three gunas but tamo guna is negatively influence the person rajo guna 50% negatively influence the person and satva guna alone positively spiritually friendly guna one has to develop that is the idea of 14th chapter of bhagavad gita also my favorite chapter i used to make use of that song kirtana of tyagaraja manasa etulortune in malayamaruta ragam when i was singing that song in my childhood tyagaraja addressed there i used to listen what is that rajoguna tamoguna satvaguna i do not know when i was singing that yagaraja sang kalilo rajasa tamasa gunamulu galavari chelimi kalasi melasi tirugaka this word sentence of yagaraja how um, influenced in my life how much influenced so what chagaraja says don't move with those people who are predominantly tamasic who are predominantly rajasic in this kali yuga kali lo in this kali yuga rajas tamas kali lo rajas tamas gunamulu gal vari cheli mi galasi melasi tirugu chumari kalamu gadapaka 
kadapaka yena don't spend your time with those people what a song what a kirtana what shastra is talking that is why i am very much attracted to tyagaraj krutis tyagaraj krutis are those krutis which are nothing but vedic teaching i consider each kirtana is a vedic teaching either purana or upanishadic teaching will be there in every kirtana that is the reason why i took nada upasana series of tyagaraja krutis my intention is that how tyagaraja brought in the devotion he brought lot of vedanta very rare compositions you can find in any musicians that much whole vedanta upanishadic teaching just he poured into that kirtanas sadhanas bhakti karma upasana and he gives very clear picture the moment i remember tyagaraja i forget myself <laughs> okay now let us enter into 20th chapter with this background how krishna is going to beautifully present to us showing guiding us how to get self knowledge easily shri bhagavan vacha first verse i will read <coughs> ಗುಣಸಮಿಶ್ರಣ ಪುಮನ್ಯನ ಯಥಾತ್ ತನ್ಮೇ ಪುರುಷವರ್ಣೇದ ಉಪಧಾರಯ ಶಂಸತ ಪುರುಷವರ್ಯೇ ಓ ಉದ್ಧವ great one purusha varya means he uddhava o oh, great one the best of men purusha varya shrunu mayu shamshataha tat me upadharaya mayu lesson mayu lesson my words shamshataha may you listen my words what i am going to talk clearly upadharaya may you register may you register and retain my words upadharaya what is that teaching i am going to you puman yena yatha bhavet ಗುಣಾಸಮಿಶ್ರಣ ಗುಣೇನ ಪುಮನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಏನ ಗುಣೇನ ಬೈ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಹುಚ್ ಗುಣ ಕೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಹುಚ್ ಗುಣ ಡಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ a person conduct gunena yatha bhavet his personality becomes by which guna his personality becomes in what way ena gunena yatha bhavet sattva gunena yatha bhavet by sattva guna how he will become by rajo guna predominantly how he becomes by tamo guna how he becomes so that uh, guna how that influences the person's individual personality the individuality of the individual human being nature swabhava highly influenced by the guna even though we are born by those three gunas but the proportion of the gunas domination of the gunas is in our hands we can manipulate them that is the idea 
That is why Bhagavan Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, 14th chapter, Gunatito Bhavarjuna. May you go beyond three gunas. May you go beyond three gunas, O Arjuna. How one can go beyond three gunas as long as body is there? Person is bound to be within three gunas. Then how can Lord Krishna say, Go beyond three gunas. Is it not contradictory? For that, you know the answer. We have to understand this way. Gunatitaha means understanding I am Atma. I am beyond three gunas. Guna nirgunaha aham. Trayam va idam sarvam. Nama Rupa Karma Jagat The Nama Rupa Karma belong to the Jagat body mind complex including I am Nirgunaha I am free from Anamakam Arupam Anamakam I am That is called going beyond three gunas So Lord Krishna says, Gunanam Asamishranam Yatha Bhavet. Here, normally after grassification, gunas will change their equilibrium. Pancha Bhutas are also with three gunas only. We are made out of Pancha Bhutas. So that Pancha Bhuta three gunas are there in our body. When they join together, the gross universe, gross body comes. Before they are joining, dasamishrana means before their combination. So Lord Krishna divide all people into sattvika group of people, rajasa group of people, tamasa group of people. Only when the mind is sattvic, person is spiritually successful. Only when the person is sattvic, predominantly, highly sattvic, he is or she is spiritually successful person. So here, in this universe, nama, rupa, karma, every object has one nama, one name, every object has got one rupa form, every object has got uh, karma of its own, its own karma also is there, every object has got its own karma, action, you cannot avoid this, but a mature refined person by following Ahara niyamas, all disciplines convert to oneself from tamasic to rajasic to sattvic. Here, asamishranam word is very important. When they are not joined, even though I, the Atma, I am the spirit, the Purushaha, I am not having any gunas. Since I am available in this body and ahankara is formed, I am very close, proximate to this body-mind complex. I don't see the consciousness. I see the body-mind complex only. So I, the purusha or the consciousness, how I express in three different levels I express. I the Purusha means Brahman. Satchidananda Aham. In the three levels I express myself. In the form, first expression of myself, the Brahman, is easiness in every Nama, Rupa, Karma. Easiness. This is the first expression of Brahman. Brahman expressed in the form of easiness. 
you should know where is the purusha tattvam matter tattvam i know swamini body is visible mind is also i am experiencing emotions but where is that purusha where is that spirit the purusha is asamishrana when the five elements are not mixed up and messed up and i the purusha i am there in the form of easiness easiness even after their mixture also i am there but i am overshadowed <laughs> once the gross body gross uh, activities starts i lose sight of this easiness i the brahman am express in the form of easiness this is the first expression of brahman where is easiness amness in the individual amness in objective world easiness is was been being all these are verbs helping verbs that easiness is uh, first expression second expression of uh, brahman is uh, consciousness i don't see the consciousness but i see the consciousness when you smile when you blink your eyes when you look at me when you turn your head like that when uh, i after saying purna madha purna midam many of you come to the video hmm? namaste swamini hari om swamini you say that is the sign you are conscious being when i say purna madha om shanti 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 many of you come to the video you switch on your video and you do namaskara mudra you some of you show and some of you utter hari om namaste like that you say immediately i come to know so i infer that you are conscious being similarly you can also infer i am a conscious being i show my hand blessing so the conscious being alone can do that so the purusha tattvam the spirit in this body or brahman express in the form of consciousness i see your smile movement you see my body movements and facial movements and uh, my talking you infer then the third expression of um, consciousness is ananda after listening to any class some students immediately they call hmm? immediately if they are very happy so nice swamini very nice class today i am very very happy immediately they call tam ananda is there for student also for guru also okay enjoying that subject i heard this subject i heard it's very nice or something else you show express your ananda the expression of ananda is the sign of brahman the expression of ananda putra ananda even putri ananda griha ananda kar ananda laddu ananda gulab jam ananda whatever ananda you experience or uddhav geeta ananda any vedanta subject ananda is the reflection of brahman no object no matter can have the ananda independently so i the brahman am expressing in the form of ananda that's why gnani is very happy by seeing the others happiness why gnani is so happy looking at other happiness why gnani want to give happiness to others because everyone's happiness is his or her own happiness that is the secret actually how gnani is happy by when others are happy and because others happiness is my happiness 
Vachyartha Drishta, you cannot accept that. How others' happiness can become my happiness? Vachyartha Drishtya, Ahankara Drishtya, it will never gel. But Atma Drishtya, Brahma Ananda alone is expressed in that person also. Since I am Brahman, I am only expressing in the form of Ananda in the other person also. What a highest knowledge this is. That is why Jnani is always happy. While he is or she is also happy, expression is there. When others are so happy, Jnani enjoys that happiness also. Because that is his expression, her expression only. Brahman expression. Therefore, Sadamsha, Chidamsha, Ananda Amsha. Sadamsha Rupena, Aham Asmi. In everything I am there in the form of easiness. In everything I am there in the form of consciousness. I manifest in living beings, in non living beings, objects. I am not uh, expressing as consciousness Chidamsha because there is no reflecting medium, subtle medium. But I am there in everything. Sadeva Chit Chideva Satam and Ananda Amsha. So Nama Rupa Karma So Sadamsha Chidamsha Ananda Amsha. Three are there. This is the knowledge given in the Shastra. So, Prakriti matter has got three gunas. Sattva rajas gunanam asamishranam. So, when these gunas, Prakriti uh, represents all by faculties. What faculties? Na? Prakriti or matter has got three gunas, sattva representing first one, knowing faculty. That is why asamishrana means when it is not mixing up with rajoguna. Mishra means combination, mixture. Asamishra means it is not mixed, sattva standing as sattva separately. Don't take literally standing. Sattva as Sattva Guna, representing knowing faculty. Atma Jnanam is a knowing faculty or doing faculty? Knowing faculty. That's why we ask Sattva Sanjayate Jnanam. Knowing faculty. What about Rajoguna? Rajoguna representing doing faculty. That is why Rajasic people always uh, highly active, hyperactive, completely Rajasic nature, doing faculty. Tamoguna representing, Tamoguna is called Dravya Shakti. This Tamoguna, Dravya Shakti representing Jadatva, inertia, inertia, absence of knowing and doing. Both faculties are not there in Tamoguna. In a Tamasic person, if you take predominantly Tamasic, there is no knowing faculty or doing faculty, but inertia, jada, tvam, inertness, lethargic. So since we are mixture with all these three gunas, we have to travel. Our journey, full travel, is with three gunas, carefully. Uh, Shraddhatraya Vibhaga Yoga, 17th chapter, highly based on these three gunas. One of the most important sadhanas, uh, um, Trayam, he has given. Shraddhatraya, guna-based. That is why gunanam asamishranam, Yena gunena yathabhavet. By which guna? He is a sattva guna. How he become a, a, a knowledgeable person? By rajav guna? 
how he become an active productive person in the society by tamoguna how he is neither knowing nor doing uh, um, person in the society that nal i going to explain he uddhava may you listen shamsataha shamsataha is an adjective me shamsataha from me the my teaching may you listen sixth case present active participle shamsataha attentively upadharaya from my teaching may you listen from my teaching about these three gunas what purpose what is the purpose for you to get the benefit of that knowledge how to become a spiritually successful person what do you mean by spiritually successful getting knowledge getting the benefit of knowledge while living in this body itself as early as possible without postponing without postponing that is why weekly four classes not one or two four classes and uh, youtube website uh, hundreds of classes why we are putting so those who are uh, one person wrote one comment in youtube uh, serious sincere seeker after listen swamini after listening to your classes hmm, a person definitely become a serious sincere serious seeker and that is i am very happy to uh, see that comment uh, anyone come in, across your teaching they become definitely sincere serious seeker that means i hope all of you are sincere serious seekers that is what a person should feel next shloka number 2 shamodamasti tikshaksha tapasatyam daya smriti tushtistyago spruha shraddham hridaya disvanirvrutah now as promised to dhava now lord krishna enumerating the list of uh, expression of three gunas in this shloka lord krishna taking to sattva guna if a person is having sattva guna predominantly the proportion of uh, sattva guna is high in any person what are the indicatory marks he has got a sattva guna he is having any label on his face <laughs> any mark on his face and his body no if these gunas these characteristics are there he is sattvic person look into the shloka shamaha control of the mind control of the mind number 1 the mental uh, calmness mental calmness is the sign of sattva guna predominantly he is a sattvic person if you want to say he is mentally calm now don't judge others okay family members wife or husband or any other person don't judge whether they are sattvic or not i have to judge myself whether i am sattvic or not this is for our um, for our own uh, introspection okay if i am a sattvic person i can maintain the mental calmness number 2 damaha damaha means sense control sensory calmness i can say calmness damaha these are all we saw in tattva bodha how many times hundreds of times you listen at least we travel slowly 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 we implement into our life that is the intention of shastra repeatedly telling sensory calmness 
sensory means all sense organs karma indriyani gnana indriyani they are not restless but a person relaxly do things relaxly knowing things anything relax no anxiety calmness in sensory instruments number 2 then titiksha tolerance that we saw elaborately in the previous chapter also titiksha tolerance and viveka chudamani shankaracharya shlokam also you can remember sahanam sarva dukkhanam apratikara purvakam chinta vilapa rahitam sa titiksha nigadyate you care of viveka chudamani you can look back into that shloka titiksha these are all there a person is easily attain the self knowledge after listening from a teacher these are all qualifications titiksha tolerance then iksha iksha means here uh, a different meaning fortitude iksha fortitude observation of uh, things situations before they are are going to come observation of things um, before uh, taking any action without any reaction showing on soul action towards them it's called iksha then tapaha tapaha means uh, austerity number 6 satyam speaking truth or avoidance of lies avoidance of lies very easy to speak lies very difficult to maintain avoidance of lies that is uh, satyam vada satyameva jayate hmm? one of the most important dharma satyam bruyat priyam bruyat na bruya satyam apriyam priyancha nanrutam bruyat esho dharma sanatanah i don't want to explain you know the meaning many times i explain in my other classes daya compassion concern empathy towards others this is the sign of a sattvic person compassion is there concern is there uh, concern towards other person listening to other person normally we never give time to other person to talk we talk hmm? we talk um that is some pressure inside and you know, i want to talk i want to talk hmm? so there are lot of thoughts are coming in that process we never hear what other person is talking It's the body psychology we can understand whether the person is really hearing to my words or not so they are very restless because they want to talk no concern for others not uh, able to listen to other person listening to others is also a daya compassion <laughs> if you are daya concerned empathy towards other people sympathy you listen others problems your family members not outsiders at least family members fathers words mothers words people are busy no time to talk to anyone nowadays not to listen also because everybody is busy with cell phone if you go outside and see i used to watch whenever i go outside how many people if i see 20 people 19 people are on phone cell phone 20 people if i see like this one range of vision 19 people are seeing the, the scrolling all the programs or something or other busy with the cell phone nobody is talking with each other even in airport uh, railway station anywhere you see on the road also people are busy with their cell phone nobody is interested in looking into others eyes <laughs> mm. 
एवरीवेयर दिस इज टेली मोबाइल मैनिया या मैम मोबाइल मैनिया इज द बिगेस्ट ऑब्स्टिकल एक्चुअली हाउ मच इज द टेक्नोलॉजी वी कैन यूज फॉर गुड पर्पस वंडरफुल बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली पीपल बिकम स्लेव टू दैट मीडिया मोबाइल टेक्नोलॉजी मिस यूजिंग इट अब यूजिंग दैट गेटिंग लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स दया स्मृति ही स्मृति मीन्स पूर्वापर अनुसंधान पूर्व अपर अनुसंधान वी कैन टेक पूर्व अपर मीन्स वाट एवर हैपन इन द पास्ट लर्निंग लेसन फ्रॉम द पास्ट प्लानिंग फॉर द फ्यूचर दट ईज कॉल स्मृति रिमेबरिंग द पास्ट इंसिडेंट्स नॉट टू हैव ए गिल्ट स्मृति मीन्स मेमरी literal meaning here uh, in depth meaning if you want to take uh, um, by listening to my own mental you know, thoughts and observation of my own words whatever i have spoken previously whatever i have thought remembering them i remember them again and again i recollect them recollecting them by my past experiences i learned a lesson not to feel bad or to feel guilt future i can plan at the purva apara anusandhan apara anusandhan means a future plan remembering the past um, make using it as a positively for my present life vartamana life so past should uh, create regret otherwise guilt and regret it create that is negative influence of remembrance of past intelligent people remember the past convert into positive way make use of it for future plans it will not influence negatively for wise people intelligent people apara means for future plans so how when can i plan for future i can plan for my future in present only not in future the planning here without any anxiety without any attachment i plan for my future now so that a healthy use of future healthy use of future uh, how is it possible in uh, now healthy use of my past experiences in present that's why past present and future are very very important in one's life one's life so may you plan for future may you learn from the past and you are in the present but people say live in present don't worry about past don't think about past don't worry about future so we have to think about the past we have to plan for future we should not worry about future we should not have anxiety for future we should not feel bad about past that we have to avoid living in the present and uh, without planning for future without um, learning lesson from the past what do you live in the present so we should not uh, misunderstand that statement live in the present means purva apara anusandhanam past and future anusandhanam we have to link it the intelligent person link them in the present that is the smriti hi beautiful word we say well, smriti means only remembrance but here that much in depth meaning is there worrying is uh, deliberate never happen deliberately planning you can do deliberately deliberate planning without any anxiety 
and uh, without any worry about past. So the, that is called uh, Smritihina. Next word is Tushtihi, second line. Tushtihi means contentment. Contentment, Ellabhase Nija Karmopatam. Be happy, content with whatever you have earned legitimately. That is called contentment without comparing any with anyone. That comparison always uh, uh, create some sort of diffidence in the mind. Never compare with others in anything, about anything, with regard to anything, no comparison. I am the best, I am the first. <laughs> like that you think. That is called Tushtihi. In even Ashtanga Yoga also, Eight Limbed Yoga, Patanjali said, you know, that uh, Santosha means contentment, Tryptihi, Tushtihi. Then Thyagaha, Thyagaha, sharing, literal meaning of Thyaga is sharing, sacrifice. These are all Sattvic uh, person's uh, gunas, Sattva guna predominant person will have. If we don't have, if you develop, you become a sattvic person. Thyagaha, sharing the resources, whatever we have with others. That is called Thyagaha. And next one is um, Aspruha. Ab absence of attachment. Spruha means attachment. Attachment to body, mind, family, attachment to children, everything attachment, attachment. Too much attachment leads to worry, anxiety. I am so much worried, na? so much attached. Na? That is called spruha. It is the nature of rajoguna. If you put all of them opposite, becomes rajoguna. <laughs> okay. Aspruha means absence of attachment. You can have um, you know, responsibility, take care of them, but never have attachment, called Aspruha. Then Shraddha, Shraddha in what? Guru, Ishwara, uh, Ishwara and Shastra. Guru Vedanta Vakyeshu Vishwasaha Shraddha and Ishwara also you have to include. Blind faith is as good as no faith. But our faith must be very, very meaningful faith. In Guru, tremendous faith. In Ishwara, tremendous faith. In Shastra, tremendous faith. Other than these three, your faith is there or not, doesn't matter. But in these things, if you have faith, that is wonderful. Vishwasaha. Ishware Vishwasaha Guru. Shastra Ishwari Vishwasaha. Then Shrihi. Next one. So many are there Sattva Gunas. You see how beautiful. Shrihi means uh, feeling shame to do wrong things. A sense of shame. Positive sense of shame in doing wrong things. Wrong behavior. Uh, ashamed to do um, a adharmic activities. Ashamed to do adharmic activities. Avoidance of uh, um, wrong things, in doing wrong things. The next one, uh, Adipat, Hrihi, um, Daya, next one, Daya, two times Daya has come. First line, daya is compassion. Again, Lord Krishna talking about daya. <coughs> Here, <coughs> daya means uh, <coughs> not compassion, but uh, you have to take um, concern um, towards others. This daya, their compassion, kindness. Here, daya means uh, sharing. You can take daya. Then, last one, Svanirvrtihi. Svanirvrtihi means um, without 
external gadgets i can remain happy comfortable with myself that is called atmaneev atmana tushtah atmaneev atmana tushtah tanimaye inimaina that's why lord krishna also said in bhagavad gita hmm? um, ekaki yata chittatma ekaki <coughs> happy within oneself vivikta sevi also another word lord krishna used <coughs> vivikta sevi means uh, liking to live in solitude that is called swa nirvrutah remaining oneself happily without any external gadgets that is the idea <coughs> here daya um we can take um, as um, compassion concern for others kindness towards other living beings and um, um adi padat we can take um, adi he is there adhi means modesty simplicity sincerity that etc we can add them also adhi padat next shloka now with this uh, sattva guna characteristics or gunas of a sattvic person or these are so uh, all these are what for to um, apply into my life if i am having wonderful if i don't have i have to imbibe slowly what about rajoguna rajasik person third shloka kamai ha madasmru trishna stamba ashirvidas sukham madotsaho yesh pritih hasyam viryam balodyamah rajasik person is that predominantly rajasik so that is why asamishranam na a person with full of rajoguna above shloka is with full of sattva guna so gnani is one who is with full of sattva guna because of that only he or she has got gnanam atma gnana why atma gnanam is not coming anna maybe sattva guna proportion has to be increased <laughs> rajoguna has to be decreased what are the rajoguna uh, qualities gunas uh, characteristics uh, if you understand if they are there in me i can reduce them gradually kamaha desire what lord krishna said ಧರ್ಮ ವಿರುದ್ಧೋ ಭೂತೇಶು ಕಾಮೋಸ್ಮಿ ಭರತರ್ಷಭ ಧರ್ಮ ಅವಿರುದ್ಧ ಕಾಮ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಾಮ ಈಸ್ ಅ ನಾಟ್ ಈವೆಲ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ನಾಟ್ ಈವೆಲ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪ್ಲೆಂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಶುದ್ಧ ಕಾಮ ಬಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ರಜೋಗುಣ ದ ಕಾಮ ಈಸ್ ಅಶುದ್ಧ ಕಾಮ ರಜೋಗುಣ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಕ್ರೇವಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ materialistic craving is called kama no spiritual inclination without spiritual inclination craving only materialistic craving is called kama then iha iha means karma desire to do karma all the time active doing kartum akartum anyathava kartum person is having capacity to do or not to do some people are workaholic after retirement also they want to keep themselves busy shastra has given retirement vanaprastha to have a spiritual inclination but people will continue in materialistic inclination that is called iha karma more interested in doing actions 
next one mother means pride ahankara pride trishna trishna means uh, covetousness trishna opposite to contentment uh, there in uh, um, tushti it is given opposite to that trishna desire uh, to get uh, many many things from others also <laughs> not only belong to him but others also he expects trishna trishna na jirnam vayameva jirnam trishna will never uh, satisfy itself and it will we will get jirnam hmm? <laughs> we will go away trishna will continue then stambaha stambaha means a person who is not having vinaya modesty politeness arrogant that is called stambaha pillar like never bend in front of others that is one no arrogance stambaha no politeness impolite person a rajasik person is one who is impoliteness immodesty uh shows that he is a rajasik person <coughs> there is a shloka written by adi shankara acharya avinaya mapanaya vishnu shamaya manaha damaya vishaya mruga trishna bhuta dayam vistaraya taraya samsara sagartah this shloka was taught by a, a sadhu to me when i was in Uh, 14 15 year old i went to meet a sadhu he taught uh, this shloka to me from that time i was uh, by hearting this shloka every day hundreds of times i used to chant that shloka i do not know the meaning in depth at that time but if i look into that uh, shloka whole sattva guna uh, asking from the lord oh god give me this sattva guna na avinayam apanaya please remove my avinayam no uh, impoliteness this is the called <laughs> stambah remove that from me no asking from ishvara at that time itself that say sadhu sangamam sajjana sangatyam is very important how it will lead all the way in your life you know spiritually successful very beautiful shloka hundreds of time day and night i used to chant that shloka without knowing the meaning only uh, knowing meaning means not knowing shama damana what i can understand without studying vedanta hmm? just words that's all because he has given that mantra to me shloka he taught me i started chanting but they have worked in my life <laughs> later that is why for children nice mantra as shlokas if you teach they will work in their life later definitely they will not go waste the vinayam will come humility will come <coughs> then aashihi aashihi means lot of expectation aashihi expectation um sakama sakama desires for hmm? sakama bhakti we can say aashihi then vida vida means seeing the differences hmm you can call selfishness a person who is more selfish selfish he looks at all people different differently he is not able to see the other people uh, as friends as uh, hmm? near and dear you can never or she can never most selfish person is called <coughs> bhida seeing the difference selfishness you can say then sukham rajasa sukham it's not sattvika sukham rajasa sukham um, seeking for more comforts Uh, asking for god also more comforts you give me give me like that so come mother <coughs> mother means uh, again arrogance we can say uh, 
um, like um, because of pride this is uh, his nature is very adamancy and more um, um, showing that uh, his own greatness madam mada andha tamasam militant disposition due to pride militant disposition dictatorship dictatorship like you know nature behavior then utsaha uh, madotsaha rude very rude um, in nature impolite in nature rude in nature madotsaha yashaha preetihi love for uh, fame love for fame interested in getting lot of kirti <laughs> next one uh, this is also rajasik nature adi mark kuda adu you should not forget uh, then uh, hasyam ridiculing others making fun of others insulting others joking you know uh, in the form of hurting others the such a humor hurting humor mm. there are people nicely tactically they insult others that is called um, here hasyam mm, then viryam viryam means uh, showing the power valor viryam displaying one's own uh, power or position uh, exhibition exhibitionism <laughs> the last one is uh, balodhyamaha means uh, uh, aggressive enterprise balodhyamaha means uh, um, aggressive in his action or her action very aggressive pushing others going forward pushing others going forward for seat for anything for photo <laughs> that is called aggressive action next uh, shloka lord krishna is going to talk about tamo guna that we will see in the next class ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शान्ति 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 हरि हि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि हि ओम